word. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. I love to read from the message translation. And then we'll read the NIV. It's a long read. Who is that person that came with migraine to church today? In the name of Jesus, as you place your hand on your head right now. Je kapalo de kebaru tele baba bara dada leke kebaru kudu ni kebaru kude. We cause that migraine, lingering migraine, for Miss Ruth today in the name of Jesus, because it has posed a distraction to the purpose of God in your life in this season, because it has introduced panic and it has brought fear. Therefore, we 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 pass judgment in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Spirit of God. Amen. Okay, I'll read from behind me. We, we call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was nobody. Isn't that what we've always read in scripture? God saying to Abraham, I set you up as a father of many peoples. Abraham was first named father, and then became a father because he dared to trust God, to do what only God can do, raise the dead to life. With a word, make something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you are going to have a big family, Abraham. Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and he says, and, and say it's hopeless. This hundred years old body could never father a child. Nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He didn't tiptoe around God's promises, asking cautiously skeptical questions. He plunged into the promise. He plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God, sure that God would make good on what he had said. That's why it is said, Abraham was declared fit before God by trusting God to set him right. But it's not just Abraham. It's also us. The same thing gets said about us when we embrace and believe the one who brought Jesus to life when the conditions were equally hopeless. The sacrifice Jesus made us fit for God sets us right with God. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 2. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 12. And so from this one man, and he, as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. It's such a beautiful thing to see Mrs. R and the entire council of the Bethesda um, Children's Ministry here in church. And in a day, you can celebrate her and all that Bethesda is doing in God's house. You know, it's also very symbolic because on the 27th of this month, we marked the Children's Day. And, you know, my, my wife and I were just re reminiscing on the, the Children's Day that we knew growing up. Right. The colorful march past, the governor's parade, and we began to speak, and a burden was created in our heart. We'll come back to that at the end of service when we pray, right? Because we're going to pray for three major things at the end of today's service by the grace of God. We're going to pray for you, we're going to pray for the body of Christ, and we're going to pray for the nation. But we want to celebrate what God is doing through the Bethesda ministry and 
how that validates the reason you and I sit here week in, week out. Because sitting here would be a crime if we do not measure out the same comfort we have received. If we do not go out there and do the same to someone else. Sitting here will be, will be, will be injustice. You know, to be all comfortable. No, no, that is not to give a sense of guilt. This, these things, the, the Bethesda Child Support Program, the Genesis House, and the God Bless Nigeria project, project validates and sort of justifies the fact that we are believers. And indeed, we are sons called in a time and season such as this. So today, we are wrapping up a series on faith. That started all the way from the last, the, the last time uh, the set man visited us here. And he spoke about moving on to the new. And we lashed in on the element of faith as, we were, as he began to signal in that message. As the tool to navigate into, navigating into the new. And from this month of May, we have dwelt week in, week out. Layer upon layer. Tearing apart this subject of faith, and it is our hope that faith has been stirred up and built up on your inside. Today, we are looking at a man who was no longer an individual at some point. Abraham became a symbol of faith. Abraham became a, a model of faith. Abraham, see, there are people that it, it, after a season, they are no longer, they are no longer human beings. They become a monument, a symbol, a representation of a concept. The Bible says concerning Enoch. Enoch was the first man that was said to have walked with God. So if you want to understand the model of fellowship with God, to the extent where you become so intertwined with him, you model Enoch. The Bible says concerning Enoch. Enoch walked with God and he was not because God took him. See, so Enoch becomes a symbol, a representation of fellowship. And concerning the man we are, we are looking at today, the Lord will have us dwell on the issue of faith. And he said in Isaiah chapter 51 verse 2, if you want to understand the concept of faith, take the Abrahamic position. We dwell in a place and in a season, in a time where the Bible describes as difficult times. I didn't describe it. He said, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Difficult times shall come. And, and it will be wars and rumors of war. You know, if it's not Israel and Hamas, we hear some other thing. It will be, there will be plagues. And if it's not COVID, we're hearing a mutation here. He said, he said, government will rise up against government. And these are prophetic things and prophetic signs of the end of age. So nothing, nothing unusual about them. But then again, it, the, the Bible was saying that in this season, when there is a shaking, it's a look to Abraham, your father. Look to Sarah, the one that bore you. Because he was one man and I called him. Can I speak to the individuality of your destiny today? You see, we have dwelt in all region for too long. Let us go to church. Let us talk about God. Let who is the thing that is going. Can You know, Mrs. R was saying something during the women's program yesterday. Uh, you know, that, 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 there are times where she would just go into that me moment. You know, during the me moment, right? Can we dwell in the me season for a bit? Because God is crafting people and he's saying to them, can you take your gaze from every other thing and look to a model of faith? Abraham is a model of faith. For this season, the just shall live by their faith. The pain we see around us. The, 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 the lack of competence of governance that we see around us. The failure of institutions. The darkness that we see out there. Oh my goodness. You cannot, if you do not, if you do not see it, you're living in denial. But what that should do to you as a believer. The Bible says that darkness surrounds the people and gross darkness. Gross darkness. Gross darkness. But in the morning during the first service, he began to warn us. He said, do not call conspiracy what they call conspiracy. And do not call, do not call fear what they call fear. Let the almighty God, let him be your dread. And that's the story of the man we see in the book of Romans this morning. Abraham chose, he chose a position in a time where people were godless. They did not know God. He chose a position. He chose a position to know and believe in God. 
In Romans chapter 4 began to tell us why Isaiah told us to look to Abraham and model Abraham. I was telling them in first service that God is deliberate about this house in this season. God is very conscious about what he is doing here. And when he starts, he is building and you can see it. And, and a couple of weeks back, we asked people to sign up for the house of prayer. It was amazing, the, the, the response. You could see that the fire has been ignited in the hearts of people. And we are, we are no longer dwelling in the us region anymore. Everyone is beginning to seek God for themselves. And we began to profile the people who came. You know, sometimes you have to do this, this thing, just to talk to them and know where you are at with God. And in speaking, we find that it's not really about the fact that I'm looking for house or clothes. These are people who in the, in the terms of accomplishment, you, you have been there and done that. But you know in this season that they that know their God are the only ones that will be strong and will do, will do, will do exploit. Therefore, you are beginning to look for a system that you immerse yourself in. And that when you immerse yourself in this system, the Spirit of God takes over and you begin, you are built. So God is consciously taking us on a journey of building. He's building in, inside, out. Because the Bible says, do not say the kingdom is approaching. Do not say the kingdom is there. You see, this is where they said, ah, God, it is happening there. Have you heard? It is happening there. It is no longer the season. It is a season. The Bible said the kingdom is within you. It is even in you. There is a kingdom God is building in you, in you, in you, Sarah, in you. Akin. There, is a, there, is, there is a system God wants the kingdom to come out from you. And these people gathered. And uh, Pastor Fulakemi and Pastor John Dong. And we just started a series of teachings just on the school of prayer. Just, just helping these folks understand this. And do Saturday. You know, you, know, you know, prayer is a regiment. Prayer is a regiment. And we're saying in the first, in the, the first service that the month of June, this is our position. We are taking the position of Britain. We are taking, if you ask us to theme June, I'm deliberately on my knees, so don't, don't get concerned about me. If you ask us to theme June, I just want to leave a graphic picture in your mind. This is June. Let us pray. Let us break into that thing. Let us grow strength in the place of prayer. Let us push in the place of prayer. He said, look to Abraham. What is it about Abraham that the Lord is asking us to look to? Abraham believed God. So everything you have heard in this season, like we said, is not to shelf up. Have you noticed that you come into God's presence and you are pumped up by the word? And some of us are daring enough to just pick up a tape or link out the YouTube page to your system on your way home and during the week. And you are also pumped up by the word. But then again, you step into the reality of life. And there is everything around you seem to be questioning everything you believe. But the Bible says that Abraham believed God. And in verse, verse 19, he says, and he did not weaken in faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the first time you hear a thing, God just got your attention. And for us, many times, we run with that. It, that's not it. That's not the level he wants you to dwell in. Because Moses was just tending the sheep. He knew he was meant to be a deliverer. He knew God was calling him to save Israel. He understood his life's purpose. He hurried into it at some point. He killed an Egyptian and then God took him to the school of the wilderness. And then one day he was tending the sheep and then he saw a great sight. It, the bush was burning and there was and the leaves were not being consumed. And he said, let me turn aside and see this great sight. That's what God does when the word first jumps at you. And then when you approach the word, come on and stay with me. When you approach the word, you will stay on it. He paid attention to the flame and immediately the flame began to speak. It wasn't the flame speaking. The word of God began to come out from the thing that caught his attention. So in this season, you have heard messages, but now you will begin to hear message. The message will not be according to that preached by Pastor Keho. No, it will be the message that God hands over to you by reason of your meditating and staying on this word that you are hearing 
in this season because your life must produce an evidence that you have moved from point A to point B. The Bible says concerning Abraham in verse 20 of Romans chapter 4, he never wavered in believing God's promise. If you read the scriptures, if you read the story, sir, you will see that at some point, Abraham wavered. Do you know the reason why the Apostle Paul could say he never wavered? Wavered each time he came to the point of doubt. Abraham stayed with God. Abraham stayed on the word. Every morning he encountered God to a measure that he can say, and the Lord said to me, go to the oak of memory. And the Lord said to me, move to the mountain because he stayed connected to the proceeding word of God. So we are in a season where, you see, I, I, we, we're, we're trying our best to just, to, to, to keep this as calm as possible. But we're in a season where you must engage. Child of God, you must engage. You must engage the proceeding word of God for you for now. See, the word is already producing fruits in the lives of people. You know why it will produce sudden quick fruits in certain lives? Because certain level of spiritual slothfulness can bring about stagnation. The moment you activate that useful engagement with God, you see, you begin to, you know when they say the restoration of years, it is a miracle from God, but it's a, it comes from a place of revelation that this is not where I ought to be. Abraham, the Bible says that even though his, his life was, his body was dead, he did not consider his body dead. He did not reason or rationalize Sarah's, the deadness of Sarah's womb. Why? Because he had his focus locked in on the promises of God. Can, can, we, can we see that scripture again? The Bible says that his faith, he did not waver in faith, rather his faith grew. How did his faith grow? He engaged the speakings of God on a daily basis. He engaged, and this engagement has nothing to do with demography, strat, strata and status, where you are at. You need it as a child, you need it as a teenager, you need it as an older person, because every stage of your life, God is speaking, God is saying something, God is handing down instructions, and this present house, we are in a season where the speakings of the Lord is deliberate, and God is taking it layer upon layer. God is deliberate with us in this season. And that's why it seems like in recharge, we are talking about the same thing. Sometimes they sound repetitive, but God says, the Bible says, once has he spoken, twice have I heard. There are times God will repeat himself. He said, Abba, Father, these words are, to, are the same thing. When he begins to repeat himself, it's for emphasis. God is saying, let your faith be anchored in me and grow it as you engage life daily. This month we pray. This month we pray. So we're going to suspend recharge, a time of interaction for one month. The five Wednesdays in June, we will engage God in a divine positioning for birthing. The nations, the, the, the foundation of this nation is agitated. There is, there is heightened spiritual agitation over the soul of Nigeria. There's heightened spiritual agitation over the soul of the institution or the, the, the part of life that you occupy. Listen, there is heightened spiritual agitation over the soul of our children. And therefore, everybody here becomes a praying mantis because you will take the position of birth from this morning that God I have come into you and I am looking onto the model Abraham himself his faith was standing right the Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was it was accounted unto him it was accrued to him it was accrued to him so there was a daily accrual there was it was it was it was leveraging daily see today Wherever you are, online and on site, you, you must become a bit more deliberate about your personal work and engagement with God. It's communion service today. And at some point, we'll be breaking bread. Pray with me for a few seconds. Zankabari da nakute keke li pakote yaka kabali nege zuzu kububuri gede li botia. Just pray with me. Just pray with me quietly for a few seconds. Jano koko 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 bodi gede. Rande ke ba nente li ba bo usha. Regi gaka li gaka li bo bo koto li gede. 
Kubala kaka balike bokele. Riba bokote negere saka kalegade. Hallelujah. So in first service, we looked at the story. Um, we looked at the fact that in this season, you are not, you are going to be termed out of your mind. Because where you will be operating from will be against the grain of everything that is around us. So we start the story of a paralytic man and how his four friends took him to the room where Jesus was. So Jesus had just stepped into Capernaum according, Capernaum according to Mark chapter 2, verse 1. He just stepped into the city of Capernaum and fame about his presence went abroad and usually with value will come a crowd. Right. So they gathered unto him. Meanwhile, that detour was meant to be a private one. Because if you read the book, the, the account of Luke, the Bible says it was after certain days. Jesus had grown in his ministry at a, a certain point. He could not no longer preach within the metropolis. Because he always, a crowd will always turn to him. Hear me, child of God. When Abraham was called, he was one man. But when he engaged faith, the Bible says he was turned into a multitude. That thing you are leaving the, the, the substance for to chase is wrapped in your chasing the substance of faith. And the moment you realize that in this kingdom it is inside out, the outworking of your life is a mirror of what God is. I'm not, I'm not benchmarking by anything that is mundane. I'm talking about you being in alignment with God's purpose for your life. So Jesus had, had just entered into Capernaum, his own town. And these people just gathered to him. But there were four guys. They had a problem. Their problem was that their friend was, was invalid. He was paralytic. And they wanted to bring their issue before the master. In the seasons of faith, child of God, you must demonstrate a level of obstinacy, stubbornness. You know, where you, you are saying to God, this is the picture we received. You know, this is the picture we, we received. Therefore, Father, will you enforce this picture in this day? Because, you see, God saw several people and he, he gave you that picture. He, he made it obvious to you. There is a mandate. There is a reason why God opens your eyes to the things you owe. Every other person drives past these children on the, on the traffic and they feel nothing. But for each time you drive past them, something in you is uncomfortable. There is a reason why he has put that thing on your inside. Each time you hear of, of, of child molestation, something just boils up on you on your inside. There is a reason why God put that person there. Each time you see poverty, you, are, you, are, you, you just can't be still. Each time you see people suffering out of sickness, there is a reason why God puts all of that there. So these guys knew that for, for you to achieve your, your purpose in God and come from a place of being invalid, you have to bring your situation before Jesus. So they came to the house. The Bible says, according to the account of Mark, not only was the inside full, the outside, the outer court was full. So four men carrying another man. People with one person going cannot even find a way. Four men, it was impossible. It was impossible to make Jesus gain, to gain the attention of Christ. But you know the story. You know what they did. They went on an elevation. They went on an elevation. And this season, God is telling us that your elevation is prayer. Because at that crowd level, you cannot play in this season. You cannot play at the level of the multitude. You can, all those guys that came and gathered that day, they were all there. They were listening. And we don't know how many of them were encountering what they were listening to. But there were four men who were obstinate that today our friend would encounter Jesus. And he would gain the attention of Jesus. So they went on an elevation. They took flight. They took a stairs, a, a, a set of stairs, and they took the man. Can you imagine the rigors of carrying an invalid man up the roof of a house? And we're saying that in this season, not only will prayer be your elevation, prayer will be your navigation. 
you know, because when these guys got there, and, and I, was, I was explaining to, the, to the, the guys who came to first service, first service, amazing people now, you, you know, I was explaining to them that the roof plan does not show you the details of a house. So you need to locate where Jesus was because the goal was to make sure that the invalid man would come and be lowered right in front of Christ. So they had to navigate to know that, oh, he was he sitting at this side of the house. Therefore, this side of the roof is upon where Jesus is. I don't know whose side you are on. If there's any side that you are on that Jesus is not, you are no long thing. Hear me, child of God. It's a time to navigate by the spirit of God to where Jesus will be located. They found it. And because that's not the thrust of today's this is second service, uh, it was okay to know that they did not just find it and they said, aha, it is done. They began to dig. They began to dig. The ancient, the ancient Israeli architecture, the, at the roof, they put roofing tiles. And then the, 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 the substance of it, the structure of it is made of mortar clay. They took off the tiles and they began to break through the mortar. So in this season, when you navigate and you get to the top of the roof and you have placed your finger on where it is, you don't stop there. You begin to dig. You begin to drill. You begin to see. Child of God, the, the, the season of our God is good enough. But we have stepped into a season where they that know their God will be the ones to display strength. The heart of the strong is failing them. He said it was crypto. That one failed. There's no safe place to invest anymore. Far led there. That's why I like Bethesda. My wife and I were discussing what's the model we should go with this time. Because for decades, for years, we have been partners with Bethesda. I, you know, some of us don't say these things, but we should be telling you because it's not good. Some things work. There's seed and there's harvest. What's the interest rate on treasury bills? Do you know? Single digits. Our bankers are telling me. You want to know the interest rate on kingdom treasury? You want to know? So when you find Jesus, when you locate Jesus in that place, you bring the word. You bring the word. So I have dwelt too long on this mountain. And then you say, the, 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 and maybe the Holy Spirit just says, the problem is that you are sleeping too much. So the sleep is the problem. And then you say, what are the promises about prayer and fervence? And you begin to gather, that is you digging. Nothing of worth is found on the surface. Ask the miners, ask the people who explore. Nothing of worth is found on the surface. You have to dig, you have to keep digging until you break through to where Jesus is. So this season, some of us will go dust our prayer room. You know, Pastor Jerry preached real strong on Sunday. But can I ask you, did you take something to the bank this week? Did your prayer life change? Because you see, there is something about you engaging the word and making it to work for you because the word works. Abraham, the Bible says, the, the, the beautiful part of our test this morning is that in verse 25, the Bible says that it is not only about Abraham that God counted righteousness. It is for us too. So there is a hall of fame Awaiting the manifestations of sons. There is a hall of fame. Sunday in, Sunday out. Wednesday in, Wednesday out. We'll come to stoke the fire here. But do you know where the burning really happens? It's when we leave here. When you go to your closet and you just, you just gather the flame. So we went to visit a, we went to visit a sister on Friday. Uh, my, my, I and Pastor Nini were just praying. And the Lord showed a picture. And it was such a beautiful picture. And I just want to share it. It, it's not, it wasn't something private. And the Lord was saying that, the woman of God, you have been in a place of birthing. Like the picture I saw was she was God using her hand to cover the fire in her prayer closet such that the fire does not exist. That responsibility is on you. It's on you. It's on me. We, 
the, the angels will, we will stoke the fire. But who will, who will cover the fire? It is you. The morning you wake up, Pastor Fatima, you won't feel like praying. Because sometimes prayer does not dwell in your soulish realm. It's, it's not a feeling. You pray when you feel like praying. You pray when you do not feel like praying until you feel like praying. Because this season, they that know their God will be strong and do exploit. They kept digging. They kept digging. I'm about to round up. You know, many times, you dig a little and you stop. I could hear the Holy Spirit say, why did you stop? You're praying for a job. And suddenly, for after three years, they begin to invite you for interviews. You attend interview one, interview two. Your prayer intensity stops. And you begin to switch to asking questions. There's nothing wrong with doing your research before going for interview. We do all of that. You see, you sort that out. But you see, when you now begin to rely on your research, ah, la, da, da, da. How can you begin in the spirit and begin to perfect in the flesh? You, you submitted your proposal. How did you even hear about the proposal? It was, you know, by the spirit you bettered that idea. And now the, the proposal is before the DG. And you're going to ask them, what does the DG like? What is the size of his shirt? Come on, go to your prayer closet and continue to dig by the word of God. For once he has spoken, twice I have heard. Twice I have heard. They dug until the roof caved in. And you know the funny thing? Jesus kept teaching. You would expect that when things are doing crack, crack, crack up there, the church will close, no? Because the Lord will keep waiting as long as he knows someone is digging. And when it opened up, they lowered the paralytic. And Jesus said to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. He said, I've never, because of the faith of your friends, your sins are blotted out. What he said to the paralytic was that, you see, I am not just healing you. I'm causing a restoration. Are there a few people today who are saying, Father, this season I sense there is a call to my prayer altar and I, I, I think you are doing something different with me and, and I, want to, I want to engage, I want to engage that which you are doing. Can we all rise on our feet for a few seconds? We want to pray. We are going to break bread. We just for a few seconds can we pray. Can we pray?